Hi! Welcome back to Farmer's Wife Homestead. I'm Stacey. It's great to see you here. So today we are going to be uh, canning uh, pineapple. Canning some pineapple. So um, I have brought 10 pineapples and my fridge feels like they've frozen it. So we're going to have to see how good they are now. Um, so I've got 10 pineapples and we are going to can them um, so that we've got shelf stable um, pineapples year round. I've run out a couple of months ago and um, I just love my canned pineapple. Um, it's far superior than, than the tinned variety. So anyway, I've got myself organised. I have all my jars in the dishwasher. That's probably what you can hear down below. Um, I have, I use AG mostly, um, but I'm starting to run out almost out of AG, so I need to buy some more. And I also have this other Kiwi um, brand of jar called Good Life. They have these cute square with a tui. You see the tui? Not sure if that's coming up on camera. So I use that brand as well, and um, I just reuse um, normal jars. Um, and also just pick up ones, so these ones have come from Briscoe's and they're little, little wee, little wee old fashioned, they're called 250 mils and I picked them up for six dollars, I think the original price was probably ten to fifteen dollars, so I'm going to put some jams in there as well because I will be making a few different preserves today. Um, I have got my jar lifter, it's just the one that I have, I have my AG funnel to help keep things clean when I'm putting them obviously into the jar. I have my magnetic lid lifter which is great. Um, all my bands and screws and I have a big box of cleaning lids. I use four jars it's an American brand, um, really reasonably priced. I have not had a failure of these. Um, I'm working on getting an affiliate link so that um, you can get them at a discounted rate. And um, so this box has 100 lids. Um, roughly, I think it cost 25 to $30. I'd have to check it out, but I will leave the link below. Um, and as I said, I'm working on a link to um, give you a discount. So I have those as well. Um, yeah, so I've um, got my big pot and um, I'm going to try something new instead of water bath canning them because pineapple is a high acid food. Uh, so stick around and I'll show you what we're going to have a go today. All right. Sorry, I'm a bit red in the face today. It is stifling hot. As you know, we're in the summer months, so um, first thing we're going to do is chop up all the pineapple. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I will show you quickly uh, the size that I do. Sorry if the lighting's a bit not great. Um, so what I do is have my big pot ready and um, put all the cut pineapple into that in some um, plain water, and then I'll add the sugar and I'll show you that later. But um, yeah, just chuck it all into a into a big pot, and we're just basically going to warm it through and just um, you know like make sure that the sugar is dissolved. Uh, it's just going to be a light syrup; doesn't need to be sweet. Pineapple's nice enough as it is. Um, I'm going to use my sink as my scrap. Um, usually I'll get a bowl but I'm going to use that for my scraps and yeah as I said into the pot. Alright let's get with it.
quarter cup. So there's two cups in there and all we're going to do is just heat it through and make sure that all that sugar is dissolved because we're going to have hot jars, we want hot pineapple and we're going to go into a hot canner because we're going to water bath these. Well, actually, I usually um, I usually water bath um, these, but we're going to give um, a new method a go today, which is um, steam canning. Uh, this is a high acid food, as I said before, so normally you would water bath for 10 to 15 minutes, um, and that ensures that you get a nice um, seal and that everything's heated all the way through. Um, but I'm going to give a steam canning a go. Um, I'm going to turn my pressure canner into a steam canner so I don't have to buy um, a steam canner because they're over $100 and then you've got to get them to New Zealand. Um, I think they, they might be some available on Trade Meat, but if you've already got the um, pressure canner, use that. You can also use a multi cooker. So I've done a bit of research. Steam canning is 100% um, safe. Um, and um, I'm just going to be trying the different um, techniques with the things that I've got. Um, there's not a lot of videos out on it. So I thought, why not give it a go? Um, it's still completely safe and it will. Um, more than half the time it takes to water bath. If you can imagine a huge pressure canner pot, mine's, well, it's huge, 23 quart. Um, it takes a long time to um, have all those cans covered in water and then you have to boil them for 10 minutes, 10 to 15, and you know it takes a long time so with the steam canner you're only heating up this much water. So yeah. That's what we're going to give it a go to. Okay, so I've got my pressure canner set up here. I'm going to put, it's got its rack in the bottom. I'm going to put two and a half quarts of warm water in the pot. Uh, it's two and a half litres if you're a Kiwi. That's how much we need to steam can. Um, for the 15 minutes. If it was something that needed canning for steam canning for longer, you can steam can up to 40 minutes safely, um, then you would add more water because obviously there is evaporation and you do not want this to boil over. Remember, we are not, we're not pressure canning this, we are steam canning. So I'm just going to start heating that up. Um, I'll just show you the Pineapple. Pineapple is sort of just about ready to come to the boil. Don't need to boil it, just that's perfect to just shut off now and it's actually gone quite a vibrant yellow. Okay, so the next step is to get your hot jars out. So they are super hot. Super hot, and we're going to start packing um, the jars. I've already inspected them, these have been cleaned now and they've been sterilized. And they're hot, it's the best way to do it. I used to do it in the oven, and this is way quicker if you've got a dishwasher. If not, you can do it in the oven. Uh, the other thing is, I've shut the window because I don't want a cool breeze. It's cool out today. Well, it's hot, but it's, it's very windy and overcast, so you don't want hot jars next to cold or coolish air coming through so I've also got my chopping board um, don't have it don't have something warm on a cold surface that's what I'm trying to say so we're just gonna prep the jars make sure you inspect every every glass I've I still have a sticker on these I haven't taken them off yet but they've just been through the dishwasher all hot so we'll start with this many I'm just gonna close up the dishwasher to keep them warm and we're going to use the funnel and I'm going to grab my ladle and 
and I've also got a slotted spoon. I'm just going to rinse. rinse that. So we want to keep all the the water. Gonna get my debubbler. I forgot to show you this earlier. This is the debubbler. It also is gives you the measurements of the headspace. Like that. I don't know if you can see an example. See, it gives you the headspace. Um, now we're going to fill it with the liquid that's in there. We're doing it just about to the rim and then we're going to debubble. Use plastic or a chopstick, don't use a knife um, because the knife can damage your jars. So you're just getting rid of all the bubbles by settling it all in. So can you see that's right up at the this bit here. Right, so don't worry if there's a little bit of fruit picking, um, poking out. I remember when I first started preserving, I was like, oh my gosh, is the fruit okay poking out? But it is. So what we're going to do now is get um, some vinegar, um, vinegar and a paper towel and wipe the rims because it's a sugary um, solution. Gonna make sure that there's no sweetness or debris. To prevent it from sealing. Now we're gonna grab our lids. Okay, I've got my lid lifter and the jars are in just hot water. Um, they you don't have to boil them anymore. Just going to place that on top. I like to still put them in warm water just to soften the seal a little bit. This little magnet um, is quite handy. If you over tighten they will buckle so as I said finger tight you're not using your wrist just finger tight just making sure I haven't over tightened these right they're going to go into the steam canner or the pressure cooker here's my pressure canner jars into hot pan. So it fits seven. Okay. Now I have second rack. Just recently bought it. I've been making do with something that I found in a dock shop buy a pressure canner, buy a second rack, you will need it. Um, because we haven't quite got um, the other jars ready, what I'm going to do, oh, well, what you could do is do two layers. You pop, pop that in there and then layer it up. I'm not going to do that today because um, I've still got those other two uh, pineapples to process so what I'm going to do is just do two lots and to put 
your lid on. So you basically want this to build up some steam in here. Um, you don't need to go by the pressure gauge because you're not pressure canning so you don't need to get it up to pressure canning heat if that makes sense. So what we're watching for, what we're watching for is steady steam to come out of this vent here. Focus, yeah. So once it's coming to steady stream of steam, we will then time 15 minutes. Okay, there's your safety, where is it there? That will pop up. Alright, so when we've got a steady stream, um, I will come back. So while that's on the go, um, I've got, I don't know if you can see, there's still quite a bit of oil on there. Probably enough to do one more round. Uh, there's seven jars in there. Hopefully I might have seven more, maybe six. Um, I'm going to process those other two um, pineapples and I'm just going to chuck them in here in the already partially cooked pineapple and let them warm through on low heat on on the stove just while we're waiting for the first lot to be ready okay i can hear it's boiling i can hear a tiny little bit of steam coming through but it's not quite coming through yet so i just thought i'd show you come back soon okay so if you can see here we're getting a bit of steam and there's a bit of water build up, so I'm just gonna place once that pops up then we should see more steam coming out of the vent. I can see it, but it's just not a steady stream yet, so not too far to go. There you go, it's popped up. So now that that's popped up start to see a little steady stream coming out of there. There, I found an angle. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so we don't need it hard out. It's as long as the steam is steady and we'll just keep that nice and steady. I'm going to boil it dry. So that's a better angle to see. my timer has gone off for 15 minutes so I'll take you over okay hopefully you can see that but there's more it's still steam this is still up I'm gonna switch it off right it's gonna settle down we need this to be all the way down before we attempt to open the lid do not try it. There's a safety valve anyway, but don't open the lid until that is down. That means that all the pressure has been released. Not that there's much pressure, because as you can see, it's sort of still on about a zero. Um, so we're just going to let that settle down. Um, once that is down, um, I'm going to give it five minutes, and then I'm going to open the lid just a little bit, keep it ajar, but I'm not going to open it all the way. Give it another five minutes. The idea is to let it get to the ambient um, temperature of the room, uh, otherwise you can cause what's called siphoning with the temperature changes that are too rapid. So yeah, so we'll give that a little bit to calm down. Okay, so that's already popped down and that was probably a minute, two minutes tops and that's popped down. But you can still hear it's boiling so you do not want to open the lid quite yet just give it some time so this is cooled down you can't hear it boiling and I'm just gonna open the lid slightly ajar and just leave it like that for another five minutes okay so I've taken the lid off and I'm just having a look in here there's still plenty of water so that's great to see um, there's no buckling very happy about that. Oh no, I tell a lie, there's one. This one here has just buckled slightly. 
you can't see. That one there has slightly buckled, so that means I tightened it too tight. Um, actually heard it buckle because it wasn't like that when I first opened the lid. So um, that's fine because um, we can use that for tonight's pizza. Um, so now I am going to take them out and pop them onto this. So I've brought this little Kmart, I think it was Kmart Tommy, and that's what I use for my <laughs> canning jars. So don't tip your jar to get the water off, it will evaporate. So now I am just going to refill the next lot of jars and repeat the process. Obviously, if, I'd had, if I wasn't filming, I would have had them all done a lot quicker and um, I would have done the double stick. So on to the next load. Here's all the pineapple. You see the white calcium deposit. That's, I didn't put any um, vinegar in there, in the water, um, I did for the second lot. So there's the pineapple, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Alright, um, that was a big afternoon, but um, it takes a lot longer when you're filming as well. So. Um, I made 16 pints or 500 mils of the pineapple. I will actually work out how much per jar that equates to. Um, but it's a good size and you get quite a lot of pineapple in it. Um, and we made, um, we preserved some blueberries and syrup. I haven't counted yet how many jars of that. I did quite a few probably about 10 jars of that in the syrup and then I had a whole heap of juice left over so I thought well why not um, preserve that as well it's better than throwing it down the drain so um, what else uh, the steam canning was brilliant absolutely brilliant it um, made the afternoon go a lot faster than if I was water bathing everything so I'm looking forward to using that method now instead of filling big heavy pots that I just can't lift and um, then saves a lot of time so yeah um, all in all I'm really happy with the steam canning and I'm really happy with using the pressure canner to do it it meant that I didn't have to buy another pot and just another thing to store so thanks for joining me today um, I hope you enjoyed it and um, see you next time all right bye